And so, so we looked at our file and we say, okay, everything's looking good. Sophie's asking when do we use PCON and when we use P. So PCON, um, well, actually, I saw Tim unmute, so I think it was. I just thought so this came up in our discussion with um, right. Kathy. Um, so Kathy, I don't know if you recall the explanation for it, but essentially the, the explanation that I gave was the so PCON means paragraph continued. So um, if you were to, so let's say, have a paragraph with a block quote in the middle of it, um, if that paragraph that after the block quote would be part of the same paragraph before the block quote with no line breaks, then you would use PCON. So it's going to get a little bit into what else is going to discuss with editorial, because in composition, we're not like reading the whole book. There may be occasions where your author has formatted the text and sort of clues you into it by perhaps including no tab or indent at the beginning of a paragraph to say, this is flush left because it's part of the paragraph above the quote. Um, but that's when that's like an occasion when you would use it. So you, the composer, may indicate that it's P or may think that it's PCON based on clues you're seeing around the text. But it could be something that you might catch later in editorial when you realize like, oh, I'm reading through this and this is all the same paragraph. There's no break here. So I, the editor, will recompose it as PCON. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't come up, doesn't come up too often. PCONs, I feel like I don't see it all that often, but occasionally an author may want to tie together an entire paragraph that's broken up by some other elements in the middle of it. And in those occasions, you would use the PCON. Right, so it's not, it's not universal. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't know if you want to get to that example. Mm -hmm. And it is a little tougher because we're all using this, uh, this like lorem ipsum text, mm -hmm. this sort of placeholder text, because it's not every block quote, it's not every paragraph followed by a block quote is automatically a pecan because mm -hmm. it could be a new paragraph. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of determined by the context and the way the author has written it. So it's not a hard and fast rule, mm -hmm. but there may be authors who say, yes, yeah, right. So, so it's not a hard and fast rule that every paragraph following the block quote is a pecan. It really does determine, it is determined by the actual context and the text and what the author is trying to say. So it's something to be aware of, but it's, it's not like a, a rule that we can say every single time a block quote, um, you know, is followed by a pecan because that might not be the case. And uh, just as another little hint, um, you can often look at just like the size of like the text that's coming after the, the block quote, the length better said, um, because if you have a long, you know, um, narrative right before um, you know, a block quote, then you have the block quote, and then you have a single line, it's often that that will be pecan. That's usually a safe bet because, you know, you're not going to have a, one paragraph that's one sentence long. Um, but again, it, it's all determined by content. So um, again, another good reason why we should use English and we will use English for the next time because um, that'll make it a lot easier to explain. Um, but um, in this case, we can look at certain clues and say, okay, this is just a couple paragraphs, you know, a couple sentences, excuse me. Um, and so this will likely just be a P. And it's a determination that we made during composition. But as Tim said, um, if somebody's editing this, which is the next step after, um, after composition, according to our workflow, um, you know, so the editor can look at it and say, hey, wait a second, I'm reading this. And because I'm the one that's reading this in depth, I can tell that this is actually a continuing thought. Um, you know, that block quote just interrupted um, the previous, um, you know, paragraph. So let's yeah. make this pecan. And they can actually go in and do that uh, themselves as well. It's something that I feel like I see a lot in academic, like monograph mm -hmm. type books. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I see them typically in textbooks. Right. Um, and we don't typically, I, I don't even think we see them in fiction books either. So mm -hmm. I don't imagine we're going to see a lot of them, but it kind of depends on your particular project. So in this case, for example, let's just um, to clear up any confusion because I don't want to leave anybody confused, right? If we take this paragraph and say, we'll just do this. Just. Oh. Typing too fast.
And so we have this, right? I'm not going to go ahead and type the whole paragraph, but we have this. And then the next paragraph, right, continues and says something along the lines of, you know, Right. Um, in this case, you would read for content and say, okay, this paragraph is about subject X, and this block quote is actually talking about this, um, you know, subject X. And then the next paragraph goes into subject Y. You can tell that there is that split, and so then this would be P. Now, if this was, you know, this. further described below um, or described as follows, then you can tell that this should be a pecan. But again, it is that idea of contents. You have to, you know, for that, you do have to do some reading, but here's the, the sort of kicker and what you need to walk away from. While you're composing, you're not reading. So it's okay if you miss that, especially if something's gonna get um, edited after the fact. Um, because the editor is the one who is responsible for reading through the content and, um, you know, uh, dealing with that. Yeah. And, and if there's still further confusion, we can always send maybe a specific example mm -hmm. of the use of pecan because I feel like we're kind of discussing it in, in, in generalities and, and mm -hmm. more conceptual stuff. And that might just be tougher to kind of glean than if it was an actual example. Right. And, and as just as Tim was saying, it's like, um, this is one of those instances where it's really good to get into like details um, and get granular about it. Um, so yeah, so if there's any, um, any further confusion or like anybody like during the break wants to like shoot us an email and say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like to know more about that pecan stuff we talked about, let us know and we'll be more than happy to show you with examples and screenshots and all that good stuff. Um, does anybody